Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Roden, and today we are going over the 15 best all-time JDM cars to ever come from Japan, obviously, because that's what JDM means. But today, these are pretty much just personal choices. Most of them do have a side of performance to them, though. Obviously, I didn't pick like a friggin' first-gen Civic. Like, I picked cars that do have a bit of a like legendary status even if it's not my personal favorite so it's just kind of a mixture between the both but really quick i want you guys before the video even starts to comment down below you don't have to comment your top 15 you could just do your top five if you want to uh your top five favorite jdm cars of all time leave a comment down below and without further ado let's get right into the video all right, so coming in at number 15 is the Toyota Celica GT4. I just made a whole freaking deep dive on the Toyota Celica line, and the GT4 is obviously in there. So if you want to know more about this car, go watch that, my good friend. But either way, they come with a 2-liter turbocharged inline 4 that makes 239 horsepower, and it was all-wheel drive. Some later models even make 251 horsepower. That's even crazier, my good friend. And it is literally just one of the best rally cars of all time due to it being all-wheel drive which was just incredibly rare at the time like not towards the 90s most of the rally cars were all-wheel drive but still it was it was still pretty impressive especially from toyota and you can think about uh the like first gt4 celica which is technically the fourth gen celica that one was even more ahead of its time it's an absolute legend Coming in at number 14 is the Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX second generation. A bit of an oddball. I bet you guys weren't expecting this one to be here, but it is absolutely freaking here for me. It is literally pretty much just a budget Evo, like a Evo for less than $10,000. It's mind blowing. It comes with the same motor as the Evo, a two liter turbocharged inline four that makes 210 horsepower power and it was all-wheel drive it also ties into the fast and furious franchise which is pretty cool brian's first ever car got blown up sadly though and yeah in case you don't know the evo has a 4g63 the eclipse gsx also has a 4g63 same motor so if you think the evo can go fast well i got news for you buddy so can the eclipse my good friend uh the eclipse it looks super aggressive in my opinion it's the only eclipse that i like actually really like and it just does not take much to make these cars look even better Coming in at number 13, however, is the Nissan Silvia S14 Kuki, specifically the Kuki, but you can you can choose a Zanke if you want to. And in my opinion, it just looks, the Kuki just looks a whole lot better than the Zanke. Also, for those that are about to say, Mark, it's Koki. It's pronounced Koki. I don't care, man. I still call it the Kuki. It just rolls off the tongue better. Anyway, it comes with a 2-liter turbocharged inline 4, making 197 horsepower, and it was rear-wheel drive. And that is going to be one of the lower horsepower numbers on this list for sure. But it's the SR20 debt okay it came with the sr20 debt so it's not the most powerful but it does have a very decent amount of potential it's literally one of the best inline fours from the 90s in my opinion if you ask me one of the best inline fours from the 90s but yeah pretty much the s14 it's used as a drift platform nowadays but it can be absolutely anything that you want it to and i love it for that coming in at the number 12 spot is the honda integra type r dc5 because the jdm this is you know the rsx for those wondering in america but the jdm integra was a little bit better than the american acura so that's why i put it here instead it comes with a two liter inline four making 220 horsepower and it was front wheel drive and it's literally better than the other integra type r that everybody loves but nobody cares about it it makes no sense like it got a faster lap time than the uh other integra the one you know the dc4 integras but no one cares and that blows me away it looks absolutely incredible to me it's what i would have gotten if i was rich instead of my integra so that's why i put it here and honestly the integra also deserves a spot a mention here at least but in my opinion the rsx or the dc5 integra is just so much better coming in at number 11 is one of the cars that i was you know how i was be talking about in the beginning how i was like oh they're not going to be all my personal favorites, but they are very good cars. This is that's one. Of, this is one of those. Uh, it's a Subaru WRX STI blob eye, and it comes with a 2.5 liter turbocharged flat four that makes 300 horsepower exactly, and it was all wheel drive. Like I said, there's just something about the looks that I just doesn't really do it for me personally, but I can easily see the like prowess that this car has. It is arguably the most legendary rally car like line of all time. It can be unreliable if you like don't know what you're doing but it also can be very reliable if you're smart and it can be incredibly fast if you like to sink a lot of money into it and it also has that iconic like subi rumble i gotta say the subi rumble hits home it's it's a beautiful noise 
and it's just it's just a great car it's also practical because it's all the drive and it's a sedan it's just it's just amazing coming in at number 10 is my car it is my 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 baby and yes i i do think that my baby is one of the best legend jdm cars of all time it is the nissan 350z of course this puppy comes with a very hated motor called the VQ35, which is a 3.5 liter V6 that makes 306 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. In my opinion, the 350Z looks absolutely incredible. One of the best looking JDM cars for sure, to me at least. And sure, it's not the best motor on this list, but it has way more potential than people give it credit for. These, uh, at least the HR uh, VQs can get up to like, I think it's somewhere between like 500 to 600 horsepower reliably without having to touch the motor. And that's pretty good. Also, the car can be bought for under $10,000 and is rear wheel drive with an incredible aftermarket support for it. And that warrants the spot for me. Coming in at number nine is the big boy. You knew it would be here somewhere and here it is. Uh, in retrospect, this car is obviously one of the top three best in terms of like the legendary status of it. But to me, it's not. So that's why I put it at number nine for those that are wondering. But it is obviously the Mark IV Supra. This thing came with one of the most legendary engines of all time, a 2JZ GTE, which is a 3-liter twin turbocharged inline 6 that on paper makes 276 horsepower. But once you actually bring it to a dyno, it makes 320 horsepower. And the car was rear-wheel drive. Uh, obviously, the Mark IV Supra is one of the most legendary JDM, one of the most legendary 90s cars, period, actually. And it does look very good, but it's just a little bit too large for me. I think I just got burnt out on them from seeing them, like, literally everywhere. Everybody talks about Mark IV Supras all the time, so I think it just kind of, like, got a little bit played out, so that's the re reason why I don't like it as much, but absolutely is one of the most legendary cars. In my opinion, it's just not one of the best. Number eight, it's a Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4. This car's getting a lot of love lately, and it, it deserves it. It absolutely deserves it. Now, is it the best JDM car of all time? No, I don't want people to think it's like a Mark IV Supra and they start to raise the prices of it like that, but it is a great car. They come with a three liter twin turbocharged V6 making 320 horsepower and it was all wheel drive. It is actually one of the highest horsepower JDM cars from the 90s. It is incredibly slept on still to this day, even though people are starting to like it a little bit more. And the engine in it is incredibly tunable. It's not the most reliable, but it's incredibly tunable. You can get the freaking VR4 to a ridiculous amount of horsepower. It also has like so much futuristic tech on it. Like it has four wheel steering. It's got active aero. I'm sure I'm missing a couple more, but it was all wheel drive too. It, it was incredibly influential and it just deserves a number eight spot all day, every day. Coming in at number seven is the first Honda of this list. No, actually, it's not. It's the second Honda of this list. The Honda S2000, my good friend. It's just, the Honda S2000, in my opinion, doesn't do anything great, but it does everything well. And that's what makes it just so perfect. It comes with a 2.2 liter inline four, making 237 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive, which was obviously very weird because it's a Honda, and Hondas are usually front wheel drive. So that was a very different thing, which is what kind of made it stand out. But it's very reliable, obviously, because it's a Honda. It's a convertible only, which usually, in my opinion, I don't like convertibles, but when they, this one works, it works really well. It looks inc incredible as a convertible. And uh, I do like the hardtop ones a little bit better, but still, it, it looks incredible. But like I said before, it's not like perfect in any way, but it's pretty damn good in every way. So that's why it absolutely just deserves a spot. It also looks just, like it's been sculpted by the gods coming in at number six is the toyota soarer z30 which we know in the states as a lexus sc300 or sc400 um, but the soarer in japan got a special motor that we didn't get here in the states and it makes me really sad it's a 2.5 liter twin turbocharged inline six that makes 280 horsepower and the car's rear wheel drive and it's called the 1JZ GTE, which is pretty much just a little brother of the 2JZ GTE without as much potential. So the 2JZ is definitely a little bit better. People can get the 2JZ up to four figures, uh, four figure horsepower numbers pretty easily. And the 1JZ can't do that. It can get to around 600, 700, but that's still incredible. And this car is literally pretty much a Supra in a tuxedo. Okay. It's got everything that you could want in a Supra, but it's now comfortable. And in my opinion, that makes it a little bit better. And it's still pretty cheap to own because it's not as known as the Supra. Coming in at number five, breaking into the top five place is of course the Mitsubishi Evo 9. Once again, just like the Subaru WRX I said before, this one's incredibly legendary for its rally racing, you know, history behind it. 
in in my opinion it just looks it's, it's just it's just such a good car they come with a two liter turbocharged inline four making 286 horsepower and it was all-wheel drive that is obviously the 4g 63 which is a much better motor than the ejs that come in the subarus don't argue with me on that you know it's true and in my opinion the car looks so much better than the subarus to me that's why i place it so much higher and i don't know there's just something about evos that are just like they're so like rare there's such like a there's like a prestige to owning an evo like if you own an evo nine times out of ten you're going to be a nice guy and you you're going to know everything about the car it's going to be a blast to drive i just love them. every time i see an evo i just can't help but smile Coming in at number four is probably going to be a car that you guys are a little bit surprised to see here, but allow me to explain. It is the Nissan GTR R35. Yes, I like the R35 better than the R34 or the R32. Sue me, baby. What are you going to do about it? I think it's a much better car. They come with a 3.8 liter twin turbocharged V6 that makes 600 horsepower stock, and it was all-wheel drive. When this car came out, it came out in 2009. When it came out, it literally could not be touched. There, there was no supercar out there that could touch it. There was no sports car out there that could touch it. It was the king of just like pretty much everything. It's definitely getting a little old now, and a lot of cars can beat it nowadays. And the interior is just god awful, especially up to today's standards. But it is just such a good deal for what you get. Like the engine, it's called the VR38 Debt, and it can make 1,000 horsepower all day every day with very simple mods like the rb26 is an amazing engine don't get me wrong but the vr38 debt is just so much better than it in every way possible getting the bronze medal for this list coming in at the old third of places is of course the honda nsx na1 the car speaks for itself i literally could end this clip right now and everybody wouldn't nobody would question why the honda nsx is in third place but i'm not going to do that it comes with a three liter v6 making 270 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive and this is one of the only v6 honda sports cars and it's also one of the only rear wheel drive honda sports cars in it it's, it's it has everything that's good about honda but in a literal like supercar body it's it handles like an absolute dream because it's honda it's reliable as hell because it's honda it makes good high-end power because it's honda the engine isn't as amazing as some of the other engines on this list but it's definitely not bad either and the car is literally the best way i could describe it the car is a ferrari with honda reliability coming in at second place is one of my personal like most beautiful cars ever built in my opinion the nissan Silvia s15 this thing comes with a the same motor actually that was found in the s14 Silvia but now just even better, the SR20 Debt. It's a two liter turbocharged inline four that makes 270 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. It is obviously one of the most legendary drift cars of all time, but in my opinion, I just think it is so much better as like a clean street car type of build. I, I, I obviously love this S15 like when they're um, drifted, but I just think S15 Silvio's body lines are just so perfect that you do not need any sort of like wide body kit or over fenders on them. And usually drift cars have those, so that's why I why i would rather just do it as a street build honestly it doesn't like handle great or and it's not the fastest of the jdm cars or it doesn't have like the most potential but i just think it looks absolutely fantastic fantastic and captures like everything great about the 90s jdm car era that i think it absolutely deserves second place but first place is if you are new to this channel is my favorite car of all time so obviously it's going to be in number one it is the mazda rx7 fd no matter what kind of list it is if the fd can be put into that list it's going to be number one because it's obviously my favorite car and that's how lists work and this thing comes with a 1.3 liter twin turbo two rotor rotary engine that makes 276 horsepower due to the gentleman's agreement it has a little bit more if you get rid of the gentleman's agreement and it was rear wheel drive there's nothing you can or cannot say to get me to not like the rx7 fd sure it's unreliable but it makes cool noises sure it's not the fastest out of all the freaking uh, jdm cars but it looks incredible sure it doesn't have you know the best aftermarket support and it's not the cheapest to own but it has pop-up headlights and smoked taillights from factory that are freaking connected i love when cars do that like the uh like the honeycomb firebird love that i love when the taillights are collect connected like that it just looks absolutely amazing it, the car does however handle like an absolute god and if you wanted to make them like car much more reliable people do swap these to k series all the time but in my opinion rotary is what makes it so special but either way though you, you could swap it to a k series and make it you know reliable and once again i just think it looks the best of any car that's ever been made and it handles great 
It's just amazing. It had pop-up headlights. Oh, it's just so good. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of today's video of the top 15 best JDM cars of all time, in my personal opinion. Like I said before, let me know down in the comments what your top five are. Also, in the top of the comments, there's gonna be a link to my new gaming channel. It's just gonna be covering GTA Online stuff because I play that game a lot and there's a lot of cool cars in there and I like I like driving cars, obviously, so it's gonna be in that game. But uh, yeah, so check that out if you want to. If you don't like GTA, by all means, do not check it out, you know? I don't want like you guys to subscribe just because you like, you know, me. I'd rather you subscribe because you actually like the content. So if you don't actually like the content, don't feel the need to subscribe. But anyway, guys, I do appreciate you watching this video. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see down below. Go check out the deep dive on the Celica. I put a lot of time into it, and I think it's really good. Dasvidaniya, have a nice night.